Yo, what is up, my people? It's your boy, Lou Chikuni, back with another video for y'all today. So, yo, let us jump right into this crazy story, man. This is the story, the latest news about this fake bishop, Bishop Lamour Whitehead, who has been accused of extorting a businessman and lying to FBI agents. Not only that, but he's also been accused of swindling one of his parishioners of her entire life savings. Headlines right here, feds arrest Mayor Adams' pastor pal for alleged fraud. Looks like they're trying to say something right there in the headline. So as we look at this story right here, man, we see this photo of Bishop Lamour Miller Whitehead uh, in tears, and he should be in tears, although this is a picture taken earlier from his... Uh, alleged, the alleged robbery that took place at his church where he was robbed of a, a million dollars worth of jewelry. Um, and this is a photo taken from there, no doubt. I'm sure there will be more tears coming as this story unfolds, as there should be, because he's facing some pretty serious charges for what he's done. So let's read a little bit of this story right here, man. So we got federal authorities on Monday arrested Brooklyn Bishop Lamore Whitehead charging him with allegedly fleecing a 56-year-old parishioner of her entire life savings, extorting a businessman and lying to federal agents. So that's three charges right there. The parishioner identified in an indictment as victim one appears to be Pauline Anderson, who has a lawsuit pending against Whitehead alleging he bilked her of 90000 in retirement savings in exchange for promising to help her purchase a home that never materialized, okay? the So check this out. The allegations against Whitehead from Anderson were first reported by the city in July. So this happens to be, as it says here, that was just days after Whitehead made national headlines for being robbed at gunpoint on the pulpit alongside his wife, while Whitehead was delivering a Sunday sermon that was being live streamed. Two of the three alleged robbers were arrested and charged in September. So this happened right about the time when he became real popular on social media and the debate started back then as to why a pastor would have a million dollars worth of jewelry on him in the first place and why would that be his lifestyle? As we read more about this dude, we find out that he is a habitual scammer. This is who he is. According to federal prosecutors, Whitehead used his parishioners' money to purchase thousands of dollars of luxury goods and clothing and never helped her obtain a home, ignoring her requests to return her money. So she asked for money back. He did not give her the money back. Made up some lies, probably. The unsealed indictment from U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, Damian Williams, also alleges that Whitehead used threats of force to attempt to get $5,000 from a businessman earlier this year. The indictment alleges the bishop attempted to get the businessman to lend him around $500,000 and give him a stake in unspecified real estate transactions in exchange for favorable actions from New York City authorities. Mmm, man, which he knew he had no ability to make happen, according to prosecutors. So as we allege today, Lamore Whitehead abused the trust placed in him by a parishioner, bullied a businessman for 5000 then tried to defraud him of far more than that, and lied to federal agents, said Williams in a statement. His campaign of fraud and deceit stops now. Whitehead, who is pastor of the storefront Leaders of Tomorrow International Churches in Carnacy, ran unsuccessfully for Brooklyn Borough President last year. Previously, he served five years in New York State Prison after being convicted of grand larceny and 15 instances of identity fraud in 2008. Listen. This dude is, this is the same guy from 2008 as he is today. I mean, I would love to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, you know, he met the Lord, his life changed, his heart changed, but I don't see it in this man's actions. I don't see it in 
the way everything seems to be about money with him, how he, uh, you know, dresses flashy, all that stuff. I mean, like, we, we, he just wants, this dude wants money, man. He wants money. He's out to get it. He's a, he's a con man. He's a scammer. And this is just who he is. This is who he is. And I don't even think him being a pastor has anything to do with any conviction to preach the gospel. Him being a pastor, he basically figured out that this was a good way to scam people of their money. That's all it is. Tell them what they want to hear. Tell them good stuff. Um, I'd love to hear some of his preaching just so I could check it out. And, but, I mean, honestly, I think it's pretty safe to say that it's prosperity-based and it is full of probably some word of faith stuff in there too and telling people that if they sow money, they're going to reap, you know, whatever they want from God, that sort of thing. So uh, I think he's cut from that cloth. And sad to say, man, I feel like most people that are cut from that cloth, um, I would like to, to, to believe that they're just deceived and maybe they do love the Lord. But I think more and more that we hear these stories there's just no reason to believe that, man. What <laughs> There's more reason for you to believe that these dudes come in as wolves. They come in as wolves the whole time in sheep's clothing, trying to devour uh, the flock, man. The question always arises in these issues of why would people sit under this teaching? Why would people subject themselves to this? Why would people look at this man's character, and no doubt there were parishioners who knew that this dude served jail time for things like grand larceny and fraud, and then you look at his lifestyle where he's trying to be all flashy and stuff, and this man is preaching to you, you're donating, I mean, you're putting, you're offering money to this guy's church and making him rich, like, something has to, uh, the question has to arise in one's mind as you view that, as to why people subject themselves to this. But honestly, man, one of the first passages that comes to my mind is 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, verse 10 and onwards, man. Let me read this for y'all. So it says, and with all wicked deception. So let me take it back a bit. I'm gonna read from verse nine. So the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So honestly, we have to admit that if folks are allowing themselves to sit under this teaching year after year after year and Obviously, look, if the teaching is devoid of the spirit, one is not growing. You don't even need to be a Christian for a very long time to sit in a congregation where false teaching is happening or where some sort of teaching that is not helping you to grow is happening for an extended period of time. You actually don't need to be a Christian for a long time because you have the spirit of God in you if you are a believer. So at some point, it's going to start to bother you. And if you if people are sitting in these churches unbothered by it, uh, celebrating their pastor, waiting for their breakthrough, waiting for the things that this man has promised them that they're going to get, we have to come to the conclusion, which is somewhat painful. And I'm not saying the entire congregation is like this, but probably a vast majority of people who go there uh, have refused to love the truth, man. People refuse to love the truth. They want, they allow themselves to be deceived. And therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false, right? In order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The Lord is going to allow them to be deceived and to be devoured by these dudes because they didn't want truth in the first place. So there's obviously great concern for the salvation of anybody who goes to a church like this and is not bothered by the things that they're witnessing. So there is blame on the side of the pastor, on the side of the fake bishop, and I don't know why or where this man received the title bishop. 
it just seems like with a lot of these false teachers, they want to have some big title that makes them sound more important. It'll be bishop or it'll be apostle, somebody. Nonsense. All of it is just nonsense. There's blame on this bishop, but there's also blame on the congregation for sitting there and allowing themselves to be subjected to this for a long period of time. And I know spiritual abuse can be complicated, but truthfully, man, truthfully, we are at a time. There's so many resources. There's so many YouTube channels with uh, great teachers teaching people the word of God. And we just have to come to a place where we have to understand and accept that some folks refuse to love the truth and be saved. Not to make this video too long, man, this is a crazy story. Um, so much more could be said. At the end of the day, he is facing some very ser serious charges. Um, it says, if convicted, Whitehead faces a minimum of 20 years in prison. That is a very long time, and I think with his prior convictions, that's going to be taken into account. Um, this doesn't look good for him. This doesn't look good for him. Um, I don't wish anybody to, to suffer uh, for no reason, that sort of thing, but I think justice needs to be served, and uh, I, I would want this to happen simply as a warning to other quote-unquote preachers or bishops or whatever they want to call themselves who are out here scamming people using the name of God to do so and not fearing the judgment that they're heaping upon themselves. I mean, it may just be that God allows you to go to prison and you actually do get saved. And if that happens, then praise the Lord, that is worth it for him to spend 20 years in jail and for that to be the outcome. Not to keep going on and on, because I could definitely say a lot more about this crazy story, man. But let me know y'all's thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. All right? God bless y'all. And I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.